There are varying models. Uh, this is probably one of the larger machines. Uh, the nice thing about this one, it has the computer on it, which uh, basically all that does is it just sets your uh, cut pattern. So it, it doesn't really run the machine or anything. All it's doing is setting when the actual head comes down and drops to the next cut, which makes it a lot, a lot easier. You don't have to continually look at the scale to see where you're at as far as cutting. section maybe just cut a few boards because we don't need all of it stickers. Okay. But other than that let's just make stickers where you can. One by one straight. Okay. okay. Uh, this particular mill has a uh, 51 horsepower it's a cat diesel and this is an LT40 super hydraulic Yeah, and well, they, some of the models actually have a gas motor, and the blades pretty much turn to the same RPM. But uh, like when this thing starts going through something, if in fact the blade stops or whatever, the, the motor won't stop on this one. It'll it'll just keep going. So you you have to basically shut it down. But uh, you'll hardly bog this motor down. It's just got so much power. But the gas ones, you'll you'll notice a lot more, and you can't go as fast as you can on this one.
and you'll see the device on the back side, the black uh, motor there, but what that is is a debarker. Now, it don't actually debark the tree, but what it does is as I go down that log, and you'll see me do it today, as I go down the log, what that does is it makes a small path with a, uh, a disc on there. I think it's got carbide teeth on it. And it'll actually cut a groove ahead of the blade. So like if there's mud or something on the log, it'll cut a path so the blade will go in that path and keep from wearing out the blade a lot faster. It, it makes a huge difference because you, you can take dirty stuff and uh, you can get, uh, say for one log, you cut that's dirty, you could do four or five of them clean and still be about the same sharpness and everything. So it makes makes a di big difference when the blade has a clean path to go through. It'll, it'll run quite a while. And this mill will actually cut approximately 22 inches wide. It's about the widest board I can cut. But you gotta have a, a good quality, good straight log for me to get that out of it. And of course, when you're cutting that wide, you definitely gotta slow down because it, uh, when the blade starts going through there, it will actually generate friction, you know, heat. And you'll, I've got a white jug on the back and that white jug, all it is is water and pine saw and the, uh, you just put a little bit of pine saw in the water and when you run the mill it, you can see the white tube on the back here, it actually has a couple nozzles that shoots water onto that blade to keep it cool and, it, and the pine saw helps keep the pitch off of it. So, it's, uh, depending, uh, the blade will actually tell you when it's getting wore too because when you try to cut with it, it will actually, uh, the tension, you can tell it's getting hot because the tension actually goes down on the, uh, on the gauge. And you know that the blade's getting hot, so you need to either increase the water or slow down your cut or whatever uh, to, to get it so the tension will come back up. Because that's, that's the way I can tell when the blade's getting more or I'm either cutting it too fast or, you know, if it's not getting enough lube or whatever. That's, how, that's the way I know what's going on with the mill. That is pretty gorgeous. What do you think? Yeah, we're getting down to good stuff now. Huh? We're getting down to good stuff now. Yeah, it's got some boards in. What the hell? Alright. That right there probably ain't a whole lot of good, but what you want me to make out of it? That. Just one buys? What is, what is it right there? Uh, I don't even know. I was just squaring it up. That's probably 14. Uh, you know what? It's so short. Now's a good time to do two buys and three buys because it won't be so damn heavy. Because furniture legs ain't going to be that long. Okay. And it's, it's going to have to be a funky stack because you can't put it on a stack. Okay. Let's just do, uh, what is it? Red oak? Yeah, red oak, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, but I. That one right there would make a better sticker one.
and the computer it, it will actually cut like 30 seconds of an inch as far as uh, uh, you could cut 30 seconds every time if you wanted it would almost do like veneer but This mill, uh, you can put up to a 32 inch across log on it. They claim that you can do around 650 board feet an hour, but I don't. I don't know how they're doing it because you know you got to have log after log after log, everything ready and help in order to, to produce that much Perfect wood. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can't have not you know just anything to slow you down. But I found generally if I run all day, I can produce uh, somewhere around 2,000 feet, and that's me and probably two or three other guys. How long do you have to air dry those uh, inch and an eighth boards? Usually it can take six to nine months. And you have to cut it an inch and an eighth to be able to get a three quarter inch board out of it? That's the usual. Okay. Now I have, if you cut really accurate and you have really good wood and good boards, you can get away with cutting it at an inch. And you'll still, by the time it dries and plane it, you can still get three quarters out of it. I, I know that for sure. That's happened. I've done it. But generally is, you know, like you do a four quarter, it's going to be one and an eighth, you know, so. That's generally for people doing three quarter inch finished product, planed and all that.
the one thing you do want to do is, is to have your stack area ready and what you can do is line up concrete blocks and pull put them on each end and then pull string so that you can make a really flat area to dry your lumber on ideally two courses of block high but we can't afford that we have too many stacks <laughs> but uh, one course works fine but if you don't have that that whole area completely flat you'll program into the wood that that bow or whatever you've got it's got to be flat across and a flat on the long plane too um, we've also found that it's better to cut in the winter because it's the very little humidity during the winter and it's easier to move the boards when it's cooler but biggest thing is the mold will grow on the wood if it gets too moist while it's trying to dry and what you can do to, to avoid a lot of that is take a couple of big fans and put it on the stacks for a couple of days straight after you cut to try to dry off a, a little bit of that water to give it a little bit of a head start. You don't want to leave them on there too long. You don't want it to dry too fast. But you want it to dry enough to maybe cut down on the mold problem. Because you'll see when the boards come off, they'll have a lot of sawdust on them. And there's really no good way to get that off of there that we found. And that sawdust kind of attracts the moisture, and that's where the mold starts.
it makes it a lot easier as far as trying to cut it because when you hit one nail I've, I've hit all kinds of things and I've hit rocks inside of trees I've hit uh, uh, bullets and a shotgun you know the pellets out of the shotgun I've hit uh, arrows uh, and you'd, you'd be surprised what you find in there but the the biggest thing that will really tear it up is just a nail just like you're nailing a sign up over the years you know that nail gets kind of swallowed in the tree and you can't even you know it gets grows around it and you can't even find it and then uh, but I'll find it you know if it's there of course I'm gonna find it
because the blade, and all it runs on, and you know, you have two wheels, and they just have a, a like a V belt on there, just like you would put on an alternator for a car, or you know, just it's a, just a normal V belt is all it is. And that blade runs on them belts, and all your tension when you when you're cutting. Your rollers, you know, they have lips on them that actually keeps the blade from moving back this way. That's the only thing that stops it, but there's nothing that keeps it from going back the other way. So you have to be careful when you're pulling boards because as soon as you pop it up and that mill's coming back, that blade's coming off. And sometimes it'll, when, it, when it does that, it'll damage the blade and you can't use the blade anymore. It'll bend it or it'll tear the teeth up or, you know, it can, several things can happen. So should they wait the mill back uh, About halfway back. And uh, this, uh, most of these mills are all the same way, but when that engine is running, the blade, at a fast speed, the blade is turning.
I believe the best way to own a mill is the way we're doing <laughs> <laughs> To be honest with you, I used to just lust over a mill just because I would love the ability to do it. But to be honest with you, this is the way to do it. But yeah, if you do a lot of woodworking, this is the way to get your wood. Yeah, I mean, because... Oh, my goodness. Even if you go down to his place and buy it for a dollar a board foot, it's a lot better than going to Swanee because I'll be honest with you, it's better wood. I think yeah, it that's, is. You yeah, sometimes... With, you got to uh, deal with air-dried versus kill-dried. Yeah. But you can get some high dollar boards from this guy oh uh, because obviously you know it's a lot of fun and i love doing it that's why i take pain medication but <laughs> uh the uh it, it can be very demanding on you you know especially when you're trying to do it by yourself that's why i always try to have help but uh, and i do cut a lot of pallet wood for uh, for an individual so that you know a lot, a lot of the sweet gum goes into pallet woods so they said, you know, the sweet gum used to be poor man's oak, you know, and they would build furniture and stuff out of it because it was so plentiful and inexpensive, but... And it grows uh, like a weed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. That's some tough...